Donna here with Photonic Health and this is my latest edition of Health Made Simple and today's guest is Dr. Ed McKnight. Dr. Ed is a well-known veterinarian. Well known to who? Well known to you. us! <laughs> and he, uh, his specialty is small animals. He also does do equines and because he's a horseman himself and he is also um, trained in traditional Chinese medicine so he teaches for a leading uh, acupuncture school for veterinarians and so we're going to sit down today and we're going to just have a chat with Dr. Ed and see if he can share any tips and tricks for us um, as it respects to the health of our animals. So welcome! Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's good no, to be here. No problem. So Dr. Ed, one of the really cool things about the evolution of medicine is really that a lot of veterinarians um, who have been trained Western medicine are really starting to embrace more of the, I don't want to say alternative, but complementary aspect of medicine as well. So for somebody who's watching we get this a lot. A lot of people think that we are a replacement for veterinarians and for veterinary medicine. And we're really not. Um, and so how does Western medicine and Eastern medicine kind of talk to each other? I think that um, you know, to address that, um, the the increased acceptance of um, we, we call it integrative medicine where we're integrating both the eastern uh, perspective and point of view with the western perspective and so it's it's called complementary but uh, most of the universities and their college of have colleges of veterinarians are calling it um, integrative medicine department uh, and so the the increased acceptance of that integrative or the eastern philosophy is is that uh, being a trained skeptic uh, versus a cynic, you know, a skeptic asks questions and wants to know how come, rather than just automatically accepting uh, someone's statement, is they're looking for uh, validation that these uh, perspectives and certainly the procedures that we do, if you want to call them procedures, uh, what are the results? I mean, are we actually seeing a benefit to uh, our, our animals and, and in particular in equine medicine and more and more uh, in the small animal side uh, they're seeing a, a positive outcome by utilizing uh, these procedures, techniques, perspectives, etc. And most veterinarians are really interested in improving the health and quality of life for our, our animal companions and so we almost at a certain point in practice, you realize that you've come up to the end of where Western medicine is no longer moving you in the direction towards health. Uh, and when that happens to you, uh, as a trained skeptic, you, uh, I would like for the professional to go, what are my choices to continue uh, broadening the tools or the number of tools in my toolbox, whether it's diagnostic or therapeutic, to help our animals. And so oftentimes uh, they, go to, they go to the Eastern medicine, the Chinese, Chinese medicine. As we see more and more communications across the, the Pacific uh, and around the world with this globalization of almost everything we do, uh, we're able to tap into the, the papers, the research, the results, the publications uh, that are available from China and other uh, places that practice, whether it's Korea, Korean, Japanese, uh, that have a different perspective than strictly Western medicine. Uh, and so that has helped uh, those uh, skeptics to learn or be accept some, uh, quote, black and white type of uh, validation that these are valid um, valid diagnostics, techniques, and results. 
Uh, and right. so I think that uh, you know, it's a, grow, a burgeoning uh, acceptance within our society here in the United States and in other uh, you know, European countries. Uh, Eastern countries have accepted that for just a few millennium, uh, you know, thousands of years. Thousands, thousands, thousands of, of years. years. And you know, that's the interesting thing is a lot of people think like just Chinese medicine or TCM, that's the only system that utilizes the acupuncture meridians, but there's the Korean, there's Indian, Indian like those are really huge as well too. Um, and so there's a whole lot of like blending and weaving that sort of goes into There is, there really is. It. Um, now, what comes to mind is that the, so also there's the dichotomy or the difference uh, from what I see of Western medicine versus uh, Eastern medicine, if you would, uh, traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic from the Indian side, is, is uh, they're focused on establishing um, health or balance. And it's not just a correction uh, or fixing of a specific problem. It's more of uh, teaching the body, trying to find ways to teach the body that it can repair itself. Uh, it doesn't have to be in pain. Uh, and so you're looking at you know, long-term solutions rather than take a pill and feel better. Right, because that's just a temporary solution. And um, balance is everything. I mean, if, you're, if you walk, balance is everything. everything and for I don't want to say I, you, you know like when you don't have balance you find out quite quickly how important it really is and so that's one of the reasons like we advocate like doing your immune boost points um, yeah you know illuminating immune boost points on a on a regular balance because that body's always seeking homeostasis exactly and and so in that, you know, when you say, to me, in my mind, when you say boost the immune system, I think, personally, I think more of balancing the immune system. And the reason I say that is that uh, when you see a condition where an animal or a human is exhibiting an allergic reaction, sure. so to speak, whether it's a food allergy, contact allergy, whatever, that is a hyper immune system and in reality you sort of want to calm it down not boost it right you want to calm it down correct but the goal is is to provide that that balance so you can do what it's supposed to do it has the energy to maintain balance maintain yeah i, I like that yeah. thank you yeah we're looking thank for you. See, that's looking, why we love Dr. so, <laughs> so you know you're on this teeter-totter and so you have an, an immune um, reaction, it's stimulated, it's overstimulated, it's overreactive. Right. And so in a way you want to calm it down, right. but in reality you're, you're, you're thinking more of a balance. More and that, of a balance. And that starts to kind of get you into the thought that uh, of some of the philosophies that are different between Eastern and Western. Correct. And you know, the, the other interesting thing that we've found on our journey is that um, you know, we're so, as Americans, we're so conditioned for, let's just fix this particular problem. And, and we get that a lot. People go, oh, my horse is fine. My dog is fine. My blah, blah, it's fine. Probably not. I mean, we're living in conditions where unless you're feeding like food therapy and then you know and i'm i'm going to default to the horses and dogs okay because Let's, those are those are the easiest for me to relate to so stressors stressors okay so what's what, what what's this uh, it seems as though uh you know there's this uh, so many things are focused on let's take the equine stomach right you know, gastric ulcers, or uh, you know, let's take the hind gut on the horse. And so uh, it's, you know, it's easy to go, well, our horses in the wild don't have those things, but they do. Correct. Maybe, 
they're not going to be as frequent or as exacerbated as they might be and those horses aren't being asked to perform on request or perform on command. I like request better, but right. on an ask. That's a, that's a, a common uh, equestrian term. You, know, you, you, you give an ask uh, and the horse does uh, what you've asked it to do. Uh, but it, these horses are not living in, quote, an evolutionary normal situation. Correct. They're not walking whatever many miles the wild horses walk over, over the varying terrain and the, the variety in diet. And uh, I mean, they have stressors. They have stressors of, of you know, finding sufficient calories, right. herd dynamics, um, you know, terrain, environment, all those things are still stressors. Right. But because they are in more commonly in balance, then they can adapt, adapt. They're, they're and there's that there's that there's that adaptation right. energy uh, or capability adapt and uh, and and there's a term for that they're called adaptogens uh, and and the ability of our body to uh, accept those adaptogens much easier much easier yeah 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 so it's one of those things where I think that um, you know stress is so thrown around in our society that it's I think some most of the time discounted oh yeah well of course i've got a lot of stress or well yeah i mean of course what's new well he's a show horse so of course he's got stress he's got to get over it he's got to deal with it well horses and dogs don't have the ability to deal with it like humans do well just well i'm gonna interrupt okay. how how many of our friends maybe ourselves don't deal with stress well and yeah, whether absolutely. or not you know, it, it's mild, and they find that uh, exercise, uh, running or bicycling, or some sort of aerobic exercise releasing endorphins to compensate for stressors, and they're looking, that runner's looking for balance. Correct. Uh, whether, or, or whether it's someone that's dealing with uh, depression, or, or, and they're taking pharmaceuticals, they're looking for balance. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're looking for, and, and yeah. when they, even if it's a, even if it's a Western medicine, in, including Western medicine, they're taking uh, the appropriate medication. Then they're in balance. They they do better. Life is good for them. Right. Yeah. They're they're yeah. People are always looking, and balance, inner peace. Right. So from there. that human perspective. From a human perspective. From and a human so, perspective. So now, so if you try to, well, it's an anthropomorphic. Uh, Anthropomorphic. Yeah, trying to move you know human characteristics to inanimate object, but we we do frequently try to we say our horse loves us. We want our horse to love us, so we want our dog to love us. Well, I don't think that I personally don't think that's the appropriate language. Correct. I I mean maybe I'm a, I'm an outlier in that respect, and in that you know by the same token, I just accept that I don't speak or understand a horse's language. I know some cues and I know some, some behavior patterns and, and establishment, but right. for me to directly communicate like we are, right. it, it, it doesn't exist. Right, well, and I think people use the word love because that's what humans feel. Or that's we, my we point, We put yes. that word to that, but yes. at the end of the day with our animals, we really want to have a connection with them and we want our animals to feel like they are connected to us as well. Yeah, we want that. I, right. I, um, I think that, um, yeah, I'm not sure how I would uh, express all of that in a more uh, specific or scientific right. manner. I just, I don't have the, I don't have the, the advanced training. Right, and, and that's okay. Um, but you do have the training in acupuncture Acupuncture. And you do use lights and some other techniques yeah. as well. And so have you found, like what we've found in our practice when Brian and I go out and work on horses and dogs, yeah. um, is that the connection between that animal is that timeline for the connection is sped up, if you will, because they 
go, oh, you're the person that made me feel better. Feel better. Do you yeah, get that? Uh, I do, and I think, and, and I think there are probably um, less definable events or um, connections uh, that maybe we don't have. I don't have the language for the terms for that establishes that connection and and I think we talked I mentioned it uh, in a previous episode uh, the the one that comes to mind is animal communicators right and just because I don't understand the technology of how they do that doesn't mean it doesn't exist right I mean I have some opinions and we're now talking more you know, quantum connections, et cetera. Right. But that, I think that's more of a, a conversation to have over a cup of coffee, you know, or correct, or something else. Or another time when we can talk about Yeah, yeah, we, it's a, that's a very we've specific had, we've subject. Had, we've had some pretty great conversations and discussions yeah, on yeah, between you, Brian, and quantum I. Quantum energy, and yeah. that's mm. quite fascinating. It is, it is. So, from an acupuncture point yeah. perspective, um, like what is the one myth that you would like to like that there's like the one common myth out there about acupuncture that acupuncture yeah. so i think okay okay um maybe the way to say that would be that acupuncture is not necessarily better or worse than any other modality of therapy. For, I mean, it would be worse for a fracture. Eastern medicine, uh, acupuncture uh, may help a healing process. It may help a pain level, but it's not going to repair the bone. Right. And so there's just one very simple example, diagnostics. Okay. Uh, in this, you know, acupuncture, we think of acupuncture mean uh, putting a needle in the animal, uh, whereas acupuncture is one of five modalities within traditional Chinese medicine. There's Tui Na, Qigong, acupuncture, Tui Na, and herbal. So there's five aspects. Now we don't do Qigong, uh, which is medical Tai Chi, if you would. Right. Uh, and animals, but we do have twina, and we do have herbal therapies, and we do have uh, acupuncture, the placement of needles, uh, and we have uh, herbal medication. And so, right. uh, so the biggest myth I think is is that it, that you can fix everything or anything with acupuncture. Right. You can't fix everything with medicine, pharmaceuticals. You can't fix everything with surgery. And so uh, you can't fix everything with one modality. And so maybe that's uh, the best uh, example I come up with uh, a myth that it just doesn't fix everything. Right. Uh, I so. think the other misnomer about conditions is we're going to fix something. And what uh, we really don't realize is that living creatures are dynamic. Good right? point. Yes, exactly. Every time we eat something, every time we drink something, every time we moment by moment experience an emotion, that our body is always going like this, trying to get into balance. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fluid dynamic. It's an ever changing dynamic. Right. And if you are in balance, then those changes maybe come across as minute changes and adaptive ability uh, to flow with that uh, is better. Right. And so then we're, the idea to start thinking is maybe maintaining health. Correct. Versus uh, fixing or uh, correcting or treating a disease. Correct. So we're looking for health. Absolutely. We're looking for health. Looking and, you know, and just on the side, uh, you know, uh, it would be better maybe this is if it's political or whatever i'm sorry but it might be better if we paid our health care providers when we were healthy right and then not pay them when we're ill 
Well, my perspective on it is that, you know, Brian and I travel internationally a All lot. All the time. You do. A lot. Um, and so we've gotten to see different cultures and, uh-huh. and, and, and different things around the world. And seemingly, it, you know, like we go to poor countries, third world countries. However, because their diets are so clean and they don't have the health resources that we have, um, they're actually healthier than Americans are. And I think part of that is because when you don't have that, I think Americans have sort of gotten into this thinking they've got a safety net, that they push all of the responsibility of their own health off onto their healthcare practitioner. And that's a fallacy. And that's a fallacy. It is. It doesn't. That's not where the. So so that that means you want to talk about you know you have um, authority, and responsibility, and then accountability. Correct. And so when the accountability comes to us and we're ill, then we want our physicians, the medical care professionals, to make us well again, whereas. It's up to us Correct. to do that, whether it's finding you know, the appropriate modality, uh, whether it's Chinese medicine or Western medicine, diagnostics, an internal medicine person, a, a surgeon. Right, uh, food uh, therapy. Food therapy, a nutritionist, a, a psychiatrist. I mean, all of those healthcare professionals, I would like to think at some point, if not all the time, they're interested in helping you be healthy. Correct. And your veterinarians, right? That's healthcare professional. And and, right. and, and our and, and the I think in the last thirty years uh, the the veterinarians have pushed this one health concept. And so you see a lot more uh, of that where veterinarians are playing important roles in the health of everybody, whether it's um, you know poultry or swine uh, or horses or or dogs or cats or humans, right? Uh, they're playing a, a role. Yeah, correct. Um, and you know that's one of the things. A lot of people like Photonic Health. Sometimes they go, "Oh, call your vet first. Call your vet first. And we've gotten criticized because people think that we're trying to cut the veterinarian out, and that's actually the last thing that we're trying to do. Well, yeah. We're, we're trying, like, our goal is to have people take responsibility for their own animals' health care and be more proactive than reactive. And so when you come across patients like Brian and I, like we bring our animals in, you know, a lot of people go, well, don't, don't your veterinarians, you know, like, don't they not like you because they don't make money off of you? And, and that's actually not true because, well, we have a lot of animals, number one. Number two, mine are difficult. So life happens. And so, you know, I still advise, like my veterinarians and you're one of them, like they're my advisory committee. And that's the way yeah. that we like to look at them is instead of here fix it because i haven't done anything with it it's more like hey you know this is what's going on we've been checking the temp every day and this is what's going on and here's the pulse and here's the this and these are what we've done and these are the responses that we've gotten what more can we do and how can you help yeah and that's a good point and so uh, as it relates to y'all's business and your philosophy and and and, and your you know, what you do, uh, these tools and the knowledge that you provide uh, only only makes the animals more healthy. And if you in if you don't get the results that you that you expect, then veterinarians do the same thing so we're not any different than you right if if what we know is not working for us it's not improving the health of the animal as well as we think it should then we go look right to another avenue uh, because again the goal is healthy 
healthy, healthy animal companions. And so y'all provide the owner with additional tools and options and to plant pearls of wisdom, if you would, uh, of when, where's that dividing line of, well, I, I need to quit doing what I'm doing and call for help. Right. I, I'm reluctant to, to say that because it's different. Correct. Well, if for, it's, uh, it goes to the, your famous answer for most things. It depends. Yes. <laughs> it depends. And uh, you have a colicking horse and you do your colic points uh, and that doesn't work. And, and, and it, it seems like most horse owners have access to banamine or Correct. flunix and uh, megalamine in some form or fashion and you give that and an hour later you still have a painful horse uh, you need some help yeah absolutely. so there, there's absolutely. there you, you have a horse that runs through a barbed wire fence and has a deep laceration uh, uh, then there are things you can do certainly you know pressure first aid uh, right. lights lights at certain places to help slow down bleeding uh tian ping uh is one and so they um you know so there's lots of options but i would be calling for help yep awesome excellent anything else you would like to impart on our viewers today no keep an open mind and oh i always love this one what's the definition of insanity <laughs> keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different, different result and so when you've gone to your resources you've done your red light uh, and your animal's still not comfortable and it's not improving then don't hesitate to ask for help right and that doesn't mean that you have to call your veterinarian no like we have a full staff that's you know like you call brian and, and send an email talk to your friends you know remember you get only a couple of things for sure guaranteed correct taxes and death and we're all trying to avoid the second one well we're trying to avoid both of them but the second one <laughs> the second the second one like you know it's inevitable but we're trying to maintain that balance until we get to that point so balance i like balance that. it's all about balance so right. maybe that's a good that's a good uh good mantra let's let's just find some balance let's just find well absolutely All absolutely right. so thank you for joining me oh, it's been fun and um thank you guys and if you have any questions for dr ed email <laughs> us we will see if we can get you an answer there you go <laughs>